A Tapestry for the Soul Lesson 1 Questions on the Nature of God Rabbi Ashlag opens the introduction to the Zohar with questions that touch us all. These are questions that concern the nature of reality and the purpose of our lives. The answers to these questions form the rest of this work. In this first lesson, we shall try and understand the questions that Rabbi Ashlag asks, just as they are. Although we may already have ideas concerning these issues, it is important to refrain from giving our own answers, as this interferes with our ability to relate to what Rabbi Ashlag is saying. A good approach to adopt is one of an open heart and an open mind enabling us to truly hear what Rabbi Ashlag has to teach. When we consider the questions Rabbi Ashlag is asking, we first of all need to understand them in Rabbi Ashlag's own terms. Only then can we look and see how they apply to ourselves. We begin with the first paragraph. Introduction to the Zohar, paragraph 1. In this introduction, I would like to clarify some seemingly simple matters. These are issues with which everyone is to some extent involved, and much ink has been spilled in the effort to clarify them. Despite this, we have not arrived at a sufficiently clear understanding of them. The first question we would like to ask is, what is our essence? What does Rabbi Ashlag mean by the word essence? The word essence in Hebrew is mahut. Rabbi Ashlag defines the term essence in his essay Mavola Zohar, Prologue to the Zohar. This is his writing. We need to study now the four different ways we use to think about things. These are A. Matter B form that is clothed in matter, C, abstract form, and D, essence. I shall first explain them in connection with things that appear to the senses in this world. For example, when we talk about a warrior, or a sincere person, or a liar, we have A, his matter, which is his body, B, the form that is clothed in his matter, which is his bravery, his truth, or his falsehood? C. Abstract form. That is, it is possible to abstract the idea of being brave, or of being true, or of being false from the matter of the man, and understand these three forms as they are in themselves, as abstract virtues, not clothed in any matter or body. That is, we may conceive of the qualities of bravery, of veracity or of falsehood, and be able to discern in them positive or negative values when they are abstracted from any matter. And D, the essence of the man. From this, we can see that Rabbi Ashlag rules out the possibility that a person's essence is his body, matter. Neither is it the personality, which would be the form or combinations of form that are clothed within the body. Nor does a person's essence consist of abstract qualities. So what is the essence of a person? And you should know that as regards the fourth characteristic, which is the essence of the man as he is in himself without matter, we have no conception of it whatsoever. Our five senses and our imagination can only show us the actions of the essence, but cannot reveal to us anything of the essence as it is in itself. Our own essence itself, or what it consists of, is completely unknown to us. I feel and know that I take up a place in the world. I'm solid, I'm hot. And I think, which are some manifestations of the actions of my essence, 
But if you were to ask me, what is my essence, my self, from which all these manifestations come, I would not know what to answer you. Behold, the divine providence has withheld from us the ability of conceiving of any essence. We are able to grasp only overt manifestations or images of actions which come forth from essences. So when Rabbi Ashlag asks, what is our essence? He means, what is that aspect of ourselves that is completely unknown to ourselves, which we cannot sense directly, imagine or grasp intellectually, yet which causes outward manifestations of its presence? At this stage, Rabbi Ashag is only asking the question. His answers will emerge as we learn. <laughs> 